Get around, children. Get around. This is it, the Dungy coming to you from Mississippi by way of Jamaica, West Indies. How y'all doing today? Oh my God. Isn't God good all the time? Let me fix my hat. Whoa, Jesus. Wow. I'm feeling good in my spirit, y'all. How y'all doing today? Yes, this is the Georgie reading Bible stories to children. Hey kids, listen closely to the story. Then join the Excel Kids game and play totally free, or ask your parents to register you as a member to play to win exciting rewards. For kids only, Saturdays at 8 a.m. and Sundays at 9.30 a.m. on Carib Vision. Hey children, how y'all doing today? Yes, yes, this is your friendly neighbor. Oh my goodness, it's the Georgie. Y'all missed me from last week. Oh my lord, such a Georgie from Mississippi. By way of Jamaica, where it's in this, y'all miss me? I miss y'all, you know. I like reading these Bible stories to y'all children. Yes, you know, it's just one of them days, you know, and it's early in the morning, you know, but so glad to be here again on this morning to read Bible stories to children. Children, Jesus loves you so much. And you know, so the judge, you love children. Yes, yes, yes. This is the judge, you love children. Yes. This is George, you love to see when children grow up to be great little boys and girls. Yes, doing great wonders for society, doing great wonders in their home. And guess what? You don't have to wait till you grow up. You could plan something uh, in your home you could do a little baking thing learn how to bake yes uh actually mama teach you how to cook you could probably fry some eggs or something you know i'm just about getting to the broadcast but i just want to share a little bit with you okay so before we, before we get into the broadcast it's the georgie like to sing so i'm gonna come back later i'm gonna share some more little tidbits all right okay and the story you're gonna be reading uh this week this Saturday morning, I believe it's October 15th. Okay. And you're gonna be read, we're gonna be reading Jesus Walks on Water. Mm, ain't that something? And the scripture is coming from Matthew 14. But remember, every week you gotta take the Bible and you gotta read the whole chapter. Okay, because that's how you're going to play the game. All right, that's how you're gonna play the game. So you got to read the story, read uh, the chapter in the Bible. Okay, all right. So before we go into that, all right, we're going to sing another song. I'm gonna use my tambourine this time. All right, I love the drums, you know. But anyway, this is the light of mine. Yes, let God let it shine. Yes, this is the light of mine. Yes, we're going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, this is the light of mine. Oh, we're going to let it shine. Yes, this is the light of mine. Yes, we're going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine all over the old home, yeah. We're going to let it shine, yes. Shine all over your home, yes. We're going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Yes, we're going to shine to Jesus come, yes. We're going to let it shine, yes. We're going to shine to Jesus come. We're going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is the light of mine, yes, we're going to let it shine. Oh, this is the light of mine, yes, we're going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
Judges are awake. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. So, we're going to read the Bible story. Yes. Jesus walks on water. And it's taken from Matthew 14. And as you can see right there. Yeah, Jesus walking on the water. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. Hmm. And go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Remember last week he fed the 5,000 people. Okay, and there's a little word I want you to remember. Jesus said in Mark 5, 36, do not fear, only believe. Okay, so after he dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Remember he went away after the crowds were coming after him, trying to get him to become king. Maybe he went away to the mountain. When evening came, Jesus was there alone. The boat by this time was long way from land. So it was in the middle of the water. Okay. It was beaten by the waves, so the wind was against him. So there was some high waves. High waves. Okay. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to the disciples walking on the sea. So guess what? He woke up. And he started walking on the sea. Oh, my goodness. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. Oh, my goodness. What is that? They said, it is a ghost. Oh, my goodness. He looks like a ghost. They cried out in fear, Lord. Oh my goodness, help, help, help. Oh, immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all, y'all calm down now. Calm down. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Come on, y'all with me. How come y'all know who it is? Okay, peace of answer, Jesus. Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. 
Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat with his brave self and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he got really afraid. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. I think I'm going to sink. Oh, 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 because he started looking down. Beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, Lord, save me. Save me, Lord. Save me. Save me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he thought he was bold. So he see him out there. He was, you see, look at him. Look at him getting on the boat. Look at that, you know, and coming out of the water, coming to meet Jesus, you know, and he was doing okay until he looked down, start being afraid. I mean, you got Jesus with you. He said to come to just look at him. All you gotta do is stay focused on him. And if he had stayed, kept his eyes on Jesus and not look down and not become afraid, he would be all right. You know, but how many of us, you know, we're going through, we're doing some things. Some of us get afraid sometimes. So I understand how Peter was feeling. You know, we get afraid of certain things that can happen to us. We see things that frighten us. Some of us see little, some people don't like snakes and insects and sister dog you don't like insects and i definitely don't want to be no, no snake okay and i can't stand mosquitoes i'm just afraid of them i don't like them things no i don't because they be biting me all over and they just tearing up my skin i don't like and i don't even know when they bite me and that's what i don't like about these mosquitoes they are so rude and so disrespectful. How did they touch Sister Georgie? How did they bite Sister Georgie? I wish I could slap one of them. Okay? And I don't like, I like I said, I don't like insects. I don't know. Some of y'all don't like insects. Some of y'all afraid of those things. Yes. And I don't like uh, grouchy, mean animals, beers, and all these things. I don't want, I don't want to be around them things. You know, I don't want to be near these big Bears, big lions, and even monkeys too. Somebody got to be careful for some of these monkeys. Yeah, some of these monkeys go to the zoo. You got to be careful. You can't be doing stuff, feeding them and things like that. Uh-uh. You got to be very careful. So, yeah, we could be a little afraid of little things. Yes, things happen, especially little children. We're afraid of little stuff, things that even at nighttime, you try to sleep and the place be dark. You got to ask your mama put on a nightlight. Because the place be dark. And you know, back at the time, you know, uh, 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 we always think they were talking about a little boogeyman gonna come get you. Yeah, so you be a little afraid. I remember my grandma, God rest us up, my paternal grandma, Lord Jesus, that woman could tell some stories, Lord. And when she spoke, she tell the stories with my, my, my brothers, my, three brothers and my little sister and myself oh my goodness we used to lie in the bed with her you know and this is the jamaica west indies okay that was many years ago i was a little girl i was maybe about eight years old maybe seven eight years old and we used to lie in her little bed she had this little full-size bed now nah, full-size bed can't hold six people five children and my grandma and my goodness, we find a way. We curl up next to her. We on top of her, under our armpits, at her foot, wherever we could find space on the bed. And I tell you the truth, my grandmother used to tell us some stories. Oh, my goodness. It would make you so scared. She would tell us some ghost stories. Oh, Lord of mercy. When she finished telling the ghost stories about going to the bush, walking through the bush at night, and you hear funny sounds. Yeah. And she would just be telling these stories every night time before we go to bed. Can you imagine listening to a scary story at night time or even watching it on TV? My goodness, you become afraid. Yes. So when she be telling them stories, Oh, my Lord. And she would say, we get frightened. Now, 
it was in the dark. So we had to, we had our own beds to go to. And we wouldn't go to our bed. We wouldn't put our foot on the floor to go anywhere. Because he thought some of us underneath the bed was going to grab our foot. Yes, yes, yes. So she would tell us these stories. Oh, my goodness. It was truly something. Yes. But my goodness, I miss my grandma for them stories. Lord have mercy. She used to make me laugh. Oh, it made me so scared. Yes. Oh, my goodness, I used to be so, and my little sister, she was scared, too, at the time. She was probably about maybe uh, two or three years old. Yeah, so she was young. So we used to sit there. Oh, my God. My, my late paternal grandmother, we used to lie all over her. Oh, my Lord. She was something. And she just did not complain. I don't know if y'all had grandmothers like that, but I tell you, mine was something else. Yes, she certainly was. She was a beautiful grandma. So if you got grandmas around and grandma's telling you stories, listen. Yes, grandma. When she tells stories, it could be so fun. Yes, yes. And sometimes the stories can be so scary. Yes. And a little creepy. Yes, yes. But guess what? It's all in fun. When you look back later on, like now, Look, I, I'm at this age, and I'm, I still remember her stories. I don't remember them word for word, but I remember she used to make me laugh. And she made me feel afraid. She just made me so afraid sometimes. I said, oh, my God. And I clung closer to her when she kept telling the stories. Yes, yes. So this reminds me, this is what reminds me of that when Peter became afraid. So... We can be afraid of a lot of things. Yes, things can happen in our lives. That's all part of life, you know, but but at the end of the day, the Lord doesn't want us to be afraid. He said, don't be fearful, okay? You have a great power and mind, okay? Do not be afraid. Do not fear. God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we're not going to be afraid in spite of what's going on around us, what's happening around us. We're not going to be afraid to go to school. We're not going to be afraid. We got like, uh, if you're dealing with bullies or whatever it is, you're not going to be afraid to stand up to them. And you tell somebody that somebody's bothering you and you don't like it. Okay. So you just got to understand that, you know, uh, 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 life, things can happen. So we can be like, feel it, like Peter who became afraid, okay? But when he called out on Jesus, yes, Jesus saved him. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of Peter, saying to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt me? Yeah, he just, you know, like I said, he looked down. If he kept focus on Jesus and not looked down, you would have been okay. Okay? So Jesus said, your faith is too little bit. I mean, if he had a faith of mustard seed, he could move mountain. But I don't think he probably had a smudge, you know? And he couldn't, but he had Jesus right there. And he, and he was afraid, you know? But Jesus said, you shouldn't have doubted me. You should just stayed your eyes on me. Okay, then you would have been okay. Now, you wanted to come out here on the water, but you're in the little water trying to touch. You start looking down now. You will not be afraid? Come on. Have some faith. I'm right here. I'm right here. Peter, Peter, I'm right here. Okay? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Huh? The wind, the wind stopped. <laughs> and those in the boat <coughs> worship Jesus saying, Truly, you are the son of God. Oh, my God. They've been with him all this time. But, you know, I think they were still learning him. Because remember, they were fishers of men. And they, they, I mean, they were fishermen. Okay. And then Jesus met them. Excuse me. Jesus met them and he asked them to drop their fishing and come to become fishers of men. So I guess, you know, I'm looking, thinking about it when I studied them. 
you know, they were taking some time to learn who he is. Yes. So it's a process to learn. And, you know, and as they were grow, going on and growing and building, and they see the many things that Jesus was doing, they were really amazed by that, you know, and they began to worship him. They began to, you know, really adore him. They began to bow down before him and to honor him. Yes, because he was, he was so great. He was so good. He did great wonders. You know, so they worship him and they're very thankful for him. You know, so Jesus, let's answer some questions. Jesus often went away by himself to pray. Remember those times? You know why he went away to pray? Because he needed the strength. You know, when he did with all these people and they're pulling on you. and You got to be healing them. You got to be raising the dead. You got to be doing all this and doing all that. You get tired. You get drained. So Jesus had to always go away to pray to his father so he could replenish himself, so he gets some more strength, so he continued the journey of the message that he had to share with the people until he went to, to, uh, to die and to be resurrected. Yeah. So, go by to Georgie. So create a word cloud of people and situation in your life that you would like to share with God. So when you're praying, use a God to pray each day. So when you pray, you could ask God for a good mind. You could ask God to not be afraid as we talk about that. You could ask God for protection as you're praying. You could ask God for good health. You could ask him for strength. Okay, you ask him to be a good person. Okay, so you can ask him to have a good memory. So when you're taking your tests, you know, you read, and when you're when you're studying, be able to remember everything you study. All right. So you could ask him of those things. That could be a prayer, something you could pray for. You could write it down. Okay, or have somebody write it for you. Okay. How does this story show Peter as both a man of faith and a man of doubt? Well, you know, when he was first saw Jesus out there, he was, he went out there to meet him. As soon as, when I said he doubted, it was because he looked down, he started being afraid, started worrying about stuff. And that's why he almost started to drown. Okay. Describe the time Jesus pulled you out of the waves of doubt. How does knowing that Jesus has saved you help when you need to face something difficult in your life? Okay, I'm going to leave that question for you because I don't want to keep giving you all the answers. Okay, so I want you to think about that. Describe a time Jesus pulled you out of the waves of doubt. Okay, when you, you know, you you say to yourself, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, I doubt it's going to take place. Uh, sometimes people may say, I doubt if I'm going to get healed. Okay, and sometimes people may say that, you know. And then it happens. How does knowing Jesus has helped you, saved you, help you when you need to face something difficult in your life? So if you were sick and you pray in your heart for Jesus to heal you, okay? And sometimes people may say it can't happen because sometimes some illnesses, people think it's impossible. But, you know, with God, all things are possible, okay? So you pray to God and God will touch your life and heal you of any situation, any problem, you know, whatever it is. So you ain't got to doubt. You ain't got to say God's not going to do it. He will. When you give it to him, put it in his, in, hand, in, in his hands. Okay, you ask him. Okay, and he'll certainly help you. All right? So don't be like uh, Peter, who at one point he was believing, and next thing you know, he changed his mind. Okay? And you know, but but I, I realized too, you know, it looked good while he was at it because Jesus was there. He it looked kind of good. Yeah, I want, but he was brave, he was bold, you know. So I say that too. He was brave to get up on that water because I don't know if I would get up on the water. But then again, if Jesus is there, you know, I'm gonna take my time because he was keeping him from the walk on the water. It was by faith he was doing this, 
Yeah, he believed. And then all of a sudden he started doubting because he, he looked away, you know. So what I tell you, you got to keep your mind and your heart, keep your heart, you know, just stayed on Jesus and everything will work itself out. Yes. So I'm just happy to read this Bible story. This is the topic. Again, Jesus walks on water in Matthew 14. Okay. So I want you to play the Excel game right after this segment. And I want you to win the prizes. So I hope you register at the Excel project.com. Okay. Slash register. Go register there and sign up for the game. Okay, so the job G wants y'all to win a game so that I can give you, so we can give you, my team and I can give you the the uh, uh, um, $50 Amazon gift card. Don't you want to shop? Then you want to get some things for school? Or have some good hair, hair bobby pins if you're girls or, you know, guys like little toy cars or whatever it is y'all like to buy. Okay? All right? So this is something that, you know, remember, Jesus performed miracles walking on water. Said so. This is wonderful. So, our next story is taken from uh Luke chapter 7. Jesus is anointed. So, I want you to read the Bible. Read the Bible. You got to read the Bible, okay? Read the chapter in the Bible. So, the chapter you're going to read next, next Saturday for next Saturday morning is Luke chapter 7. Because when you play the game, it's going to come from the entire chapter, all right? So, the next story. Jesus is anointed. All right. So I was sharing, you know, earlier in the in the broadcast, you know, uh, about little jobs you can do, little things you can do in your community, in your home to learn how to do. And remember, you know, you can learn how to cook. You're not too young. If you're six, seven years old, my son, when he was six years old, he was cooking eggs. My oldest son was cooking eggs. Yes. He, he did a good job. He could toast. OK, so he he loved to fry eggs. But of course, I was around the area when he was doing that. Sometimes he tried to surprise me, try to do it because I kind of taught him how to use the stove. OK, but uh, you got to make sure someone is supervising you. Don't go touch the stove unless your mommy or your daddy's there or some adult there to oversee that you're doing whatever you're doing correctly. OK, so don't touch the stove unless you get permission to touch the stove and make sure somebody's there while you're trying to cook, okay? And sometimes you can bake a cake. They got little box cakes you can you can bake, uh, you know, and you can, watch, you can read the ingredients and let your mommy or daddy or auntie or uncle or grandma or grandpa, they show you uh, how to measure. And that's good. You can learn these things in school. They have to build up your math. Yes, and help to build up your mind, and it will help you learn how to measure how many cups to put in a recipe, how many eggs, how much oil to put in a recipe, just simple recipes. You could make some cookies, you know, and you could do little things as a little boy, little girl, instead of just sitting there with the gadgets. I keep telling y'all, stop being on these gadgets, okay? Don't spend so much time on the gadgets. Read a book read some books, go to the library after school, you know, and just so sit in the library, the children the corner, and go read some books. There's a lot of books up in the library. You can take some out too. All you got to do is get a library card, take some books out. You have the book for three weeks and make sure you don't lose them now. Read them, take them back and get some more books because reading is fun. Sister Georgie loves to read as you can see. Okay. And the more you read is the more you gain great knowledge. You get smarter. Yes, yes, yes. And readers are great leaders. Yes, yes. You read, the more you read is the more you will succeed. And the less you spend time on these gadgets, okay? Read a book. Yeah, you can play with the gadgets sometime, but don't spend your whole time. I'm not saying you can't play with your gadgets, but don't spend your whole day playing with the gadgets or watching TV and watching some of these cartoons. Some of these cartoons are not good for children. Yes, you know, so you got to be very careful. But, you know, uh, go and, and like I said, I was to always tell you, go out in the park 
and their little lines and little things you could play, play hopscotch. I keep talking about that because it's, it's in the park. It's, uh, it's on the, uh, there's a mix of the basketball. There, there's little lines in the park. Excuse me. Where you can, you can uh, play uh, uh, um, games, okay? So. Excuse me, Sister George, got to drink some more water. Yes. So, so you just got to understand that children, you know, as you grow up, you got to enjoy life. You don't want to grow up too fast now. Don't be rushing to get to nine or get to 10, whatever age you are. Oh, when somebody asks you, what's your age? Oh, I'm almost nine. No, you eight years old. Don't be trying to say, I'm almost, what are you trying to get to almost whatever age you're trying to get to. If I, I, if you're eight years old, say I'm eight years old. Don't be trying to rush to grow up. Take your time and live your life as little boys and girls. Because let me tell you something. When you get to 18 years old, there's going to be so much responsibility on you. You're going to wish you were a child again. So take your time and live your life and have fun. And enjoy your life to the fullest. And enjoy Jesus as part of your life as well. Okay? And don't forget, like I said, to read. And spend some time writing poetry. Spend some time writing things in a little notebook. You never know what can happen down the road. Some rhymes, write them down. And it teach you, you know, you learn how to, uh, and you know your ABCs, and you know how to form your letters and the more you learn, the more you practice, the more you get better at it, okay? So Sister George is encouraging you to do more reading and more studying and read the Bible. Read the Bible as well. Okay, wake up in the morning, read a scripture, or even say the Our Father prayer. Our Father, child in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There's not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Ask your mommy and your daddy or your auntie, whoever you're with, to teach you the Our Father prayer. And that's found in Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13. When you pray that prayer, that prayer can help you through so much. You can pray that prayer morning, noon, and night. And that prayer is a powerful prayer to take you through. And the more you pray the prayer is the more God will begin to change your life. Maybe even change the direction of your prayer. Okay. So know that uh, 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 um, you're reading the word and you're learning the miracles of, of Jesus Christ and how he operated. Okay. You know, he fed 5,000 people and he walked on water. And next week is Jesus is anointed. Okay, and we're going to learn how he's anointed. That's Luke chapter seven. Powerful story. All right. So know that I love you and Jesus loves you more. So I'm going to sing another song. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Rise and shine. Give God the glory. Rise and shine. Give God the glory. Children of the world, rise and shine, give God the glory, rise and shine, give God the glory, rise and shine, give God the glory, children of the world. All right, God bless you, and again, I love you, and Jesus loves you more, so don't forget to play the game, sign up for the Excel project.com slash register and play the great game on a weekly basis. And uh, I want you to win that $50 gift card, Amazon gift card. Okay. Again, I love you. Jesus loves you more. See you next time. It's a sister John G from Mississippi by way of Jamaica West Indies signed off again. So goodbye y'all. Have a good week. See you again. Would you like to play the Excel Kids game? You can. 
go to www.kidsmedianetwork.com and click on the Games tab. This is a 100% engagement platform for kids to not only play the Excel quiz game, but also to find other free gamified quizzes and interactive lessons. Participants can join from any device with a web browser or use your iPhone and Android apps. The Excel Project's Kids Engagement Platform is also a useful study platform that your child can use to study other subjects. Check it out today.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing today? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great day because I'm certainly having one. And I just want to talk a little bit about the Excel project. The Excel project has been on my heart for so many years. I've launched it in 2014. And it's just, I've been asking God, when is this going to come forth? So I, 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 you know, since I joined the virtual network and, you know, in after the pandemic started in 2020, April 2020, I mean, it's been a blessing. So little by little, it things get unfolding. Oh my goodness. And I'm so excited to see it come to fruition. I love when I see a young man, a young woman doing something positive. Oh, I go out of my way to help them as much as I can because it really needs somebody to push them and help them to grow and build. Yes, so we have the IAC accredited uh, certificate, certificate courses. Yes, and that's a, a standard continuing education and training. Uh, it's a universal model for, for um, helping for learning process excellence. So this is something that the students, they get a certificate after they finish the program. So they feel good. So it's like a six month course. You know, and we have different people will be training them from different parts of where you don't have to be um, anywhere in the world. You can get this um, done. You can get the, you can do this program, sign up for this program, and it will certainly help you because, you know, we have to save our youth because the youth is our future in their lives because everybody is born with a purpose and a plan. But we got to find out what is it we need to do. I always talk to the students when I say to them, what is your passion? And some of them don't know what it is to have a passion. So I said to them, what is it you, when you were young? Let's go back to when you were young. What is it you like to do? You know, and I would sometimes it was kind of puzzled. So I kind of give a little, did you draw? Did you, draw, um, you know, do little cartoons? Did you have a little journal? You draw some little papers you do. What is it you do? And they started thinking, did you like what you do? Did you write down, did you like to do portraits? You write down things that you were dealing with in your life. I mean, there, there are things that you were doing and didn't realize it. Did you like to make things? Did you like to uh, pull things apart and put them back together? And then some of them say, yes, yes, I did that. Oh, so, so that's a passion. Did you like to sing? You like to dance? You know, and, and some of them say, yes, I like to cook. So there you go. Yes. To, you know, those uh, um, who want, who are writing books, uh, extra product you book deal competition for ages 12 to 25. Cause their children out here that's writing books. They have things in their, in their thoughts, you know, and they write down things. They don't realize that it's actually a book they're actually writing, you know, so it's a good way to encourage them, you know, so it's with, you can find the Excel project.com slash kids. You know, so it's it's a powerful program. And this is encouraging them as well to be, you know, also help them to learn to how to be in, in, entrepreneurs. Okay, this is all part. We're developing entrepreneurs as well, you know, because they need to feel good about themselves. And it's so important, you know, and knowing that, you know, they have put something out there in society that even when they get older and they, oh my God, oh, didn't I see you somewhere? You know, and to make them feel famous, you know, and, and that's powerful. We want to make sure young people, our future, you know, be all that they can be. And that's all that it's all about, you know. And we also have the IACET accredited CU courses, which we did talk about early for earlier for professionals, ex-convicts and seniors. Because we don't want to forget them as well, because the seniors, um, it's like a forgotten generation. You know, most children don't even, you know, people don't really think much about seniors. They really do a lot of harm to them. But, we you know, we want to, seniors are very important to our society. You know, they are like the wisdom of our society. I call them the wisdom, the wisdom people, you know. And I really like sitting and talking to them and hear their stories because it's so important. You know, and the Excel project is also to, to bridge that gap between the older generation and the younger generation okay and it's so important for them to do this and ex-convicts for them not to go back to what they do to re re uh do crimes again you know redo crimes and go back to prison again because 
prison's not a fun place to be, you know. So if everybody sign up at dxlproject.com slash register, you know, it would be so great because I tell you, it's just an awesome thing, you know, to really uh, know that this uh, vocational training center is doing something to help, to enhance, you know, our young people, whatever they, they have already, to enhance their growth and to push them into greatness, you know, because all of us, there's greatness in all of us. We know it's there. And we just got to educate our minds to be sincere, you know. So we got to, you know, change the way we think, you know, because we have to work as a team, you know, in order to help our young people to grow because our children are her future. And we got to make sure the future is bright and, uh, and we have to be the adults to help them, to push them to where they need to be. And thank you so much for listening. And God bless. Did you enjoy that story? We hope you did. If you would like to be a part of the show, fill out our guest form at theexcelproject.com forward slash kids. See you next week. Stay safe.